What's up everybody? This is El Diablo Mexicano. In today's video I'm going to be showing you guys some quick beginning basic tips because the game just was finished being on sale over the weekend. We have the new holiday event going on. And what better way to welcome all the new players than having a quick little guide for some of the tips that I found very, very helpful. There are going to be some of the basic ones at the very end of the video and at the bottom of the video. I'll be giving another link for some more advanced tips that I've been using and I know some other people have been using to kind of some of them will be perk specific, but there will be more advanced ones, but that's for another time. And, well, let's begin. So the very first term that I'm going to be introducing is trash. When you hear people talking about focus on trash Zeds for whatever perk you're playing as, they're talking about the Zeds that pop in, like, basically the very first wave. So you have your cysts, your plots, your gorefasts, and even your slashers. Those Zeds are trash because, well, there's just a lot of them. They don't really require a demolition or heavy duty commando to take them down. They're just pointless, and the only way that they cause a lot of problem is that they're everywhere. And so you want to focus on Zeds that are trash if you're like SWAT, uh, Firebug, things like that because you're not focusing on doing high damage power you're focused on mainly clearing out the Z so they don't overwhelm the rest of your squad. The second important term that I want to cover is kiting. Now kiting is when you're holding up in a good spot but now you're getting overrun and now it's time to move on and so kiting is great because it requires it allows you to quickly move to another spot and it prevents you from dying because a lot of times you're too, there's too many Zeds, there's too much stuff happening all at once. There's flush pounds, you, you have your SWAT member dying, so now you have too many of the trash Zeds coming around. However, there's a couple hard things about kiting. The first big thing is that if people are not paying attention, you may miss the fact that someone said, We gotta run, it's kite. Either it's someone typed it out or they spoke over the voice channel. And now, because of that, you're left behind. The other problem is that, as you can see, as you should be seeing, Zed will still spawn in front of you. So while your most basic instinct would be to turn around and shoot at the stuff behind you, you also have to keep an equal balance to make sure that not only are you killing things chasing after you, but you're also focusing on the Zed that are possibly spawning in front of you. This will prevent you from getting overwhelmed and overrun. The last two terms I want to introduce are SC and FP. So if you're looking in someone just types in SC, that stands for Scrake. Scrakes are the monstrosities of chainsaws. And they start off walking, but if you slowly shoot them, they'll begin enraged and get pissed off and start charging at you. The other term is FP, which stands for the other big Z, which is Flush Pound. Flush Pounds are the guys with basically meat grinders for hands. And they're pain because while the Scrake is either always walking or always running, the Flush Pounds bounce back and forth between the two of them. Flush Pounds will actually, most of the time, start off walking if you're on the lower difficulties. And then either if you take too long to fight them off or you shoot them and you piss them off, they'll begin charging at you. However, in some of the harder difficulties, Flush Pounds have a higher chance of spawning already mad. And so they'll just spawn in and immediately begin charging after you. And so when you see people talking about SCs or FPs or even hear those words, Flush Pounds Scrake, that is what they're referring to. Referring to the big Zeds. Now this next tip is a pretty simple one if you've been playing multiplayer games for a while. It's simple, stick together, and be a good teammate. Now in terms of Medic, that is one of the perks, and it's a lot easier to keep the team healed if everyone's together nearby you. Otherwise, it's almost always that one Berserker who takes out running, thinking he can destroy and kill everything, and to be fair, you probably can in most hard or normal levels. But when it starts getting to the diff more difficult levels, such as Hell on Earth or Suicidal, that's when I just ignore the Berserker and just let him die because I'm not going to run halfway across the map to try to heal him. Now, in terms of like healing syringe, so if you're not a medic, it's actually also benefit beneficial for you to heal your teammates. If you heal yourself, your healing syringe will heal you for 20 points of damage. Same thing if you heal another person. However, here's the catch. If you heal yourself, it takes 15 seconds for your syringe to recharge, and it takes 7.5 seconds for your syringe to recharge if you heal another person. That means in the time it takes to heal one person, you can heal two of your teammates. So there's more healing around, meaning there's more people to survive the fight and help you guys win and move on to the next round. The last thing for sticking together is that it's a lot easier to take down the bigger Zeds with more people. 
when there's more players in a match, that means there's more Zed spawning, and that they also have more health and they can do more damage. So, if you're having, getting surrounded by like Splash Pounds and the Scrakes, it's a lot easier to take them down when you have more people because there's more people doing damage on them. The fun thing about Zeds is that most people don't realize that they have weaknesses and strengths, almost like Pokemon. For example, the Husk. Because he's a fire-based Zed, the Firebug is not going to be very effective against him if you use like your Flamethrower or your Incendiary Shotgun. So if you use regular weapons, you're going to be able to do the most damage. And, as a bonus, Husks have a weak spot on their back. If you shoot the barrel on the back, they explode. For a Bloat, surprisingly, Fire-based weapons do a lot of damage to a bloat, so you're going to want your firebug to be focusing on bloats. Another thing about the bloat that some people don't realize, especially for beginning off, the body can take a lot of damage. The body has so much HP, yet the head, usually quick headshots, all you need to do to take out a bloat, especially if you have like a shotgun. Now, as a heads up, I've seen a lot of newbies do this, where they shoot a bloat and he'll keep stumbling forward. You actually do not need to keep pumping ammo into him. It'll just cause him to explode. And while it's fun and cool to do that, it's not necessary. Otherwise, you're just pissing away ammo and wasting it. So for the Flesh Pound, he's actually weak against rocket launchers. So that's going to be your demolitionist, or if you have grenades, chuck them at him, because those are going to be the most damage to a Flesh Pound. Now, for the Skrake, his weakness is actually, surprise, surprise, not explosives. Which is the reason why it's shocking is you'll see so many demolitions just keep buying RPGs into Scrake. And Scrake's weak point is actually going to be just normal bullets. They're a bullet sponge, but the bullets are going to be doing more damage than actual explosives. And for me, probably the best perk that's suitable for killing Scrakes is going to be uh, your support because you have things like your double wheeled shotgun, which does massive damage to Scrake. So the next tip I'll be talking about is welding. Welding is nice is because if you want to hold off an area, you can have one person be designated to make sure the door is sealed shut, and it'll prevent any of the Zeds from the other side breaking in. However, as a word of caution, on some of the later difficulties, there's actually a small percent chance that Zeds will just break down the doors. And I personally do not like this mechanic in the game, but it's there and there's nothing much I can do about it. Other things on the welding, your explosives do damage the door, and you can blow down their own doors. If you're your support class and you have a broken door as seen here in the outpost, you can actually repair the door and this makes it usable again. This is nice because especially if you want to find an area where you can, oh I don't know, hold off and just kind of stay there but the door is broken, you can just run up to it and then right when you get to 100 the door is sealed and it's back. If you're demolitionist and you're welding doors, you can actually put a door trap on it, as you can see right there. It tells me how much percent of the door I've welded and also how much my trap is at. Now it changes colors, and that's how you know that a demolition put a trap on the door. And he says that break this down will actually blow themselves up. So this next tip I want to talk about is the bash. Most people think that the bash just uses to push zombies away. Most people don't realize that the bash actually helps cancel out Zed's special abilities. That's the Siren. For those of you who do not know, the Siren basically screams and damages any players within a certain radius. If I run up to it just naturally, she'll scream, and I'll get damaged, and I'll get hurt. However, if I run up to her and bash, it'll actually cancel the scream and stop her from screaming. Let's see if I can get her to scream. Come on. Cancelled. And it happens for every Zed that has a special. If you just run up and bash it, it'll cancel it. This is great for things like the Siren, because let's say you're kiting and you're running around a corner and there's a Siren or two, you just run up and bash and it'll stop them from screaming. And same thing if you're not paying attention and you have a Siren walk in the air that you're holding out, I usually charge them right away and immediately smack the shit out of them. The bash will also stop most big Zeds from hitting you. So for example, there's a Scrake right there. If I run past the Scrake, I can just smack him and it'll stop his attack. Because normally, you just walk up to a Scrake, he'll hit you from a big radius. And yes, bashing works on the flush pounds. If you come across a bloat, bashing a bloat will make it stop throwing up on you. For those who do not realize, crawlers have a special bash, as in if you jump on them because they're like spiders, 
you can actually stun them. This way, when you usually see people get surrounded by crawlers, they'll start jumping to hopefully step on them. And because it is a bash, it'll interrupt any enemy attack. Well, everyone, that's all the time I have for tonight. Those are my first five tips I have for any beginner who's starting out in Killing Floor 2. Um, because it was the holidays, I'm actually not going to be able to upload as much videos as I'd like to as I'm going to be going out of state and I won't be able to be at home working my computer for this next couple weeks. I should be coming back on the 5th of January. However, I'm hoping that I'll be able to take my videos and able to work on and edit a couple of them over these next couple weeks because I do have a couple of them on my external hard drive that I'd like to upload as soon as possible. There's a couple news flashes for Killing Floor 2. Tomb Raider, as well as some gameplay for Tomb Raider I'd love to put up on YouTube. I'm just hoping I, I'm just hoping I don't know if I'll have the time, unfortunately. Well, everyone, um, again, I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked the video, please give me a like and subscribe. And if you have any other tips you'd like to give to the new players, please post them in the comments below. Well, everyone, I hope you enjoy your break if you're in school. And if not, then I wish you the best of luck of the holidays. Take it easy.